Philip Heatley. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I, I rise to support um, the member Damien O'Connor on this uh, local bill that he introduced to uh, the House, the Tasman District Council Validation and Recovery of Certain Rates uh, Bill, in its uh, second uh, reading. We're certainly supporting it as a national uh, party team. Uh, we understand the weaknesses in the bill, but then, uh, as the member uh, so clearly put it, it's a very imperfect situation uh, there in the Tasman district. Uh, we're making it better. Uh, we're not claiming to make it perfect. Uh, the situation there is uh, the rate setting essentially was broken and we're cobbling together uh, the pieces to make best of what is a difficult situation. Uh, this bill will validate rates set by the Tasman District Council uh, for the period from 2003-04 uh, through to 2008 and nine, that five year period, uh, during which the council did not follow correct process in setting uh, rates. And we want to be clear about that. Uh, this bill will also validate rates and penalties paid over the period, yes. uh, authorise the council to recover any unpaid rates and ratify the Tata Beach and Lagabe storm water rate. Um, this bill uh, will highlight to other councils the importance of proper scrutiny when setting rates. And I know Damien O'Connor in his first reading speech uh, introduced this legislation with some angst and he repeated those concerns uh, just now. And I'd have to, um, I can't do better than quote Damien O'Connor in his first speech where he said, quote, I have to say I'm not overly enthusiastic about bringing retrospective legislation to the House. However, I'm a very proud local member and I've spoken to the Tasman District Council and agreed to sponsor this bill into Parliament where a select committee can give it due consideration. Uh, the member, Damien O'Connor, said he was a reluctant sponsor of retrospective legislation, as of course uh, we all are. The main area where we seem to have this in the House is over a fisheries legislation and this is not the case here said Damien O'Connor. It is local government. Uh, they've made the mistakes. Mistakes do happen from time to time. I know each and every one of the councillors in good faith took advice from their staff and of course assumed that they had put in place valid rating claims on the rate payers. I do not know those councillors. Uh, the Honourable Damien O'Connor obviously does know those councillors. He felt uh, and he was assured that they in good faith had left the role uh, to staff of actually um, putting together um, the rates, ensuring that they were uh, brought together properly and that rate payers would be, uh, uh, it would be legally required to pay those rates. Um, so, as Damien O'Connor said back then, this is perhaps a long and drawn out and quite expensive process, but it is one which we have to go through uh, nonetheless. And that's what brings members uh, to the House today, the National Party uh, joining Damien O'Connor in passing, um, well, I hope when the vote goes through, passing the second reading of this piece of legislation. It is true that we have seen uh, issues like this arise across the country from time to time. We just recently dealt with a similar issue uh, in the Kaipra. Uh, National, uh, as the public will know, has introduced uh, better local government uh, reforms which will help make local government more efficient, uh, more responsive and better focused so that these types of issues don't arise again. It will help uh, Nas the National Party and the National Government driving the reform process to ensure that councils focus clearly on their core business, uh, are not frustrated or in any way um, uh, confused or uh, are led to not pay attention to the detail 
of their core business. The Better Local Government reforms will include a work stream to monitor and improve council performance um, and to prevent future procedural areas as we see in this Tasman District Bill and we saw in the Kuiper Bill as well. So it's quite timely for us as National Government to drive through those reforms to get better outcomes from local government by um, their rate payers. So I was on the select committee that went through uh, the process uh, of the, um, the in-committee of looking at the clauses uh, one by one and discussing them with the Tasman District uh, public and the Tasman District Council and others who had a view. And we made some changes. For example, for the sake of consistency, a uh, technical amendment will be made to clauses uh, 5A, um, 6 and 9 to replace, quote, declared to have been the statement with declared to be and to always have been. Uh, the committee are sympathetic to proposals to delete Clause 9, uh, but found that this course of action would be outside the scope of the bill, and Damien O'Connor uh, outlined the issues there. As such, the committee has recommended only the technical amendments um, clause 9 seeks to validate targeted rates set by the Council for the 2006 financial year for the purpose of the stormwater uh, works in the Liga Bay and Tata Beach urban drainage areas, for example. Uh, the committee also noted there would be uh, many uh, practical implications of deleting Clause 9, and that's why the intent of the Local Government Rating Act 2002 is for local authorities to address rating areas as soon as practicable. Under that Act, we, we are ensuring that when councils come across errors, they act swiftly uh, and justly, uh, leaving those areas, um, setting them aside and not dealing with them leads to problems that we've seen in the Tasman District. And I would like to emphasise that, not just to Tasman District Council officials <coughs> who are listening, but those in local authorities right across New Zealand. If you come across uh, errors in the rating orders that councils uh, have uh, passed historically, then they need to address those uh, errors within council as soon as practical. Not, because, not just because it's useful um, for the ra uh, ratepayers uh, have to face up to mistakes and in the end deal with them, but because the law says that councils need to do that immediately. Um, given the historic nature of the rating areas in question, it would be difficult without such validation. The Council will be, need to be required to determine which ratepayers had paid the rate in 2006-07 and the amount they'd paid, a very difficult uh, task for them to undertake. They would have to ascertain whether the current ratepayers are the same ratepayers as those in 2006-07. They would have to apportion rates if they were uh, multiple owners and they'd have to write to each ratepayer advising them of the amount of the refund and requesting bank, de bank details for um, repayment. So making those uh, changes in the bill that we have before us today, if the committee had recommended that, that's what councils would have to go through. So not only a onerous task for the council, but one which would, be, um, which would inevitably result uh, in mistakes and transfer angst from one group of people to another group of people, from one set of ratepayers to another set of ratepayers. And it's not uh, this Parliament's role um, to uh, transfer uh, problems from one group, uh, which are vexed problems from one group, to vexed problems uh, to another. And we are making the best of what I said at the beginning of my speech a difficult, what is a difficult situation. So the merits of setting a stormwater rate were found to be outside the scope of uh, this bill. So in summary, Mr Speaker, uh, this bill is needed to validate certain rates set incorrectly during that period, 2003-04 uh, through to 8-9. Uh, without validation, the Council remains vulnerable to legal challenge from ratepayers over incorrectly set rates, and no one's arguing that they will. Um, some residents have objected to details of the stormwater rate that they were not properly consulted on and are being charged for stormwater services they are not using. Uh, but Damien O'Connor himself acknowledges that the 
as the bill's sponsor, he's discussed their concerns, is convinced the select committee will provide residents with an opportunity to engage and to, to, to move on. So a key part of National's better local government reforms is to prevent this from happening again. And Mr Speaker, I support uh, reluctantly, uh, like Damien and Cullen and others in the committee, support this bill uh, in the House today at second reading. I call the Honourable Member Sua William Sio. Malo Suifua. Malo Suifua.